Hello everyone and welcome to HD Piano. My name is Dan and in this lesson I'll teach you the piano part to Evil Woman by Electric Light Orchestra. In this first video we'll look at the intro and the main progression. They sound like this. we run into this pre-chorus. Chorus. Alright, the rest of this lesson including the piano solo and whole song performance. It's all at hdpiano.com if you're not already there. All right, quick question, guys. I used to think this song was called Medieval Woman, right? Because if you hear the chorus, there's an extra syllable out front. You think it's like, but it's not. It's Evil Woman. Um, so I'm wondering, are there any song lyrics or song titles that you got wrong from the start because you didn't read it. You maybe heard it on the radio and uh, you could never unhear those lyrics. I'll be curious uh, what you come up with in the comments below. All right, let's start on this intro. We have these nice kind of rattling pads. Uh, C9 is this first chord. C is in the left. E, G, B flat, D. And this is middle C, by the way. So we're kind of low on the keyboard. Take this same chord shape and move it up to F9. F's in the left, A, C, E flat, G in the right. I'm gonna kind of collapse that chord on itself. Now we have an F sharp diminished seven. F sharp's in the left, A, C, E flat, F sharp in the right. And then finally, a nice big C major chord. C's in the left, G, C, E, G in the right. Let's go over those again. C9. F9, F sharp diminished 7, and C major. Now when we play these, we're going to tremolo over these chords, okay? It's kind of another word for shaking, okay? So we're just going to shake each chord. A couple schools of, of technique on this. I prefer the kind of bottom to top. It's a very methodical approach. You can see it in slow motion. It's more or less what I'm doing there. Uh, other people prefer maybe sort of more of a rocking motion. It's more frantic. I like to stab it and then kind of carry it through with that bottom to top motion. So anyway, that's how we will play those chord pads. Now we have what also happens to be a part of the pre-chorus. It's this fun piano riff, maybe the most recognizable measure in the song outside of the chorus. Uh, C major triad on the right, C, E, G, and then the left hand is just going to outline that same chord. Try that with me. And. Again. And. Faster and faster and and that is recorded speed. Now we're into the verse riff, and the verse riff is so similar to the chorus, so we'll kind of lump them together. We start on this A minor chord. Now this is important. Uh, the chords, three chords, they don't change. All right, it accounts for maybe ninety percent of the song, maybe more. Um, a minor is the first of them. The second is E minor 7. E in the left, G, B, D in the right. And the third chord is D minor 7. D in the left, F, A, C. We're just shifting like so. So the right hand is just doing this planing motion. 
just sh shifting downward and then back upward. A minor, E minor 7, D minor 7, E minor 7. Okay, that general chord progression, uh, that's going to take us through the rest of this song. So don't forget it. Now, we got to talk about the rhythm. Um, this is a really fun rhythm. I think the piano player on this was uh, Richard Tandy, if my research serves me well. Um, and the record was 1975. So back then, they weren't playing a single measure and then looping it. Uh, they were recording it live. So maybe this measure would be played like this the second time. All right, because he's playing live, he's improvising, and uh, he knows that if he holds true to that simple chord progression that uh, he really can't mess up, okay? That's something I talk about in a lot of a lot of my lessons. So let's get into the actual specifics of the rhythms in this verse part. That right there is the verbatim piano part from the recording. Right before the, the lyrics come in, I should say. So we're playing one, two, three, and four, and the right hand is anticipating the D minor chord. Two, three, four, and two, three, and four, and we do a lot of that, the rabbit hopping one, like that one, two, three, four, and that's anticipation. And then every other cycle uh, in this chord progression, the E minor chord comes just a little bit earlier. I'll show you what I mean. The first time, here's the first cycle. E minor. Here's the second cycle. E minor. Not sure if you could tell, but it just arrives a bit earlier. Um, there's no uh, easier way to explain it without uh, notating it out. Um, but that's the idea. So I'm just going to play this verse uh, a couple times really slowly, and maybe you can extract some of these rhythmic bits. Watch the left hand here. It's really filling in the cracks. Again. So that's the verse. some really subtle nuances uh, within that chord progression. I'm not going to talk about too many of them. Um, they're so subtle. They're just little rhythmic alterations that um, are really hard to explain uh, without notating. So uh, let's go into the pre-chorus now. This is the um, just a few bars right before the chorus. We have an F major 7, F in the left, A, C, E in the right, and then a G root position triad. It's just G, B, D in the right. And then we have this big C chord we've seen before. And then... I mentioned uh, in that intro part that this would come back as the pre-chorus, and it does. Instead of the, the triad in the right hand being this small, we're actually expanding it by adding a G on the bottom. If your hands can't reach, no problem. Just play the triad. So here's the pre-chorus uh, with, with rhythms. So we're just going from the F, mi F major 7 with the left hand sort of driving us. Right? And then the right hand drives. There's your little pre-chorus segment, and then the chorus. Now this is going to seem awfully similar to the verse, because it is, it's the same chords. They're just a little wider, a little uh, more expanded, so this A minor chord is E, A, C, E, and it's higher on the keyboard too. Okay, and then 
similarly, we're just taking this chord shape and we're planing it down and then back up again. To down to E minor 7 and then D minor 7. And then back up. And then the only other thing to address is the rhythm, um, which again is similar to the verse. say if I had to sort of uh, put a blanket statement over how the chorus differs outside of just the range and the expansion how it differs from the verse um, the left and right hand uh, they're playing together more okay so where in the verse we had this sort of independent left and right hand it was almost acting the left hand as a bass line you can hear that there uh, in the chorus, they're sort of playing together more. All right, so again, that's a, that's a nuanced difference. There's nothing um, super obvious about that, but that is the chorus. Uh, I think what I'd like to do before uh, I let off here is play the verse very slowly for you and then play the chorus very slowly for you uh, as well as the pre-chorus so that you have sort of these blueprints if you need to really see it slowed down at a uh, macro level. So here we are, verse three and four and... Chorus. Chorus. Sweet. Awesome job, guys. You're still with me. Congratulations. Like I said before, the rest of this lesson is at hdpiano.com. Uh, if you're on YouTube, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe, drop us a comment below. Uh, those misunderstood song lyrics, I'm really curious about those. And then uh, I'll see you over at hdpiano.com. I am Dan, and we are the home of the hybrid piano lesson.